Yeah. Okay, cool. It's looking good. Yeah. All so, right. So uh, what I think is happening today is uh, Peter is going to talk to us about a um, about a um, <clears throat> method that he's been using in his PhD research, and uh, it's called Sadie. It's it's a met it's a method that I think um, solves a particular problem that I, I see a lot of people having in their data at Harper. And if I just cast my eyes across the, uh, the group here, the only person I know who who this could be useful to for sure, 100%, is Joe Collins. Joe, this is something you could possibly use because this controls for spatial variation. And one question you can ask is, is, is the variation you observe random or is it clumped? Um, you can do some other things with it too. And um, uh, I'm just going to hand it over to you, Peter. I'm excited to see this. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. As Eddie said, uh, oops. let me share my screen. Uh, so today I'll be introducing this uh, methodology. It's called study the spatial analysis by distance intensities. So today is uh, it's just the introduction on how this methodology, how it works, and uh, how how you can use it. So this it's a methodology that uh, was. Uh, uh, I would say specifically develop, developed it for ecological data, uh, particularly I would say ecological county data, and uh, its purpose is to is to detect um, or measure the the spatial pattern of the ecological data. So, for example, as Eddie said, is uh, you want to know if the you have collected the, your spatial data, you want to know if the if they are clustered. If the uh, the arrangement is uh, random, or if it's uh, if there is a regular pattern of the of the data. Another way where whereby you can uh, you can use this methodology is if you want to to find the association between the data set. For example, if you have collected the maybe the field data, maybe the insect data and the crop data, and you want to know if there is association or I mean if there is a correlation between the the appearance of the of your of the crop uh, and the pest, you can also uh, use this method. So to to measure or to detect the uh, the spatial pattern of the of the of the data, this method uh, use this uh, the, uh, the following uh, <clears throat> the following component. I would say the following indices. The first indices that it uses is uh, it's called the index of aggregation. So this is the main thing for for the study because uh, this is where you can detect if there is a if you are if you, the, the data that you have collected if they are uh, if they are randomly arranged or if they are aggregated or if there is a regular pattern of the data. And uh, so when the data is equal to one, then when we say, I mean, when the index is equal to one, we say that that's a random, random uh, arranged data. The pattern is randomly. If it's greater than one, we can we say that it's aggregated. Or if it's less than one, we say that there's a regular pattern for, for your data. Uh, another component or it, that you can, you can use uh, to determine the pattern your data, it's uh, it's called the cluster index, where whereby you can determine the places in your data set, uh, the places where you have collected the data, if there there's a patches or if there is a cluster, and uh, the places where there is a there is a gap. Where, I mean, where we say that in 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 side we say low counts or higher counts. So. If the presses are a higher count, we say that's a patch. If the presses are a lower count, we say 
that's the gap. And uh, for easy presentation uh, with this methodology on, for example, using R, you can uh, visual, uh, visually represent uh, your analysis so that you can see where there is a cluster or where there is a there is a gap in in, in your data set. So while you implement this uh, methodology, uh, uh, you, 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 you go with the NARI hypothesis that uh, the NARI hypothesis is that uh, your data are randomly arranged. So when you do analysis, if, uh, if the p-value, if you get the p-value less than uh, 0 0.05, then we, you reject the analysis hypothesis. Then you say that uh, your data are clustered or are aggregated. So <clears throat> maybe one person can uh, can can ask why 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 you should use this method uh, study and uh, not. Uh, other GIS tool like Kriging or these other interpretation uh, interpolation tools where you can uh, use the your your data to to to, the, to create an interpolated map to see uh, uh, the, the 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 spatial pattern of your of your data. Well, uh, as I said earlier, this method has been developed mainly for the ecological data because uh, the presence of the of the zero count. Because, for example, let's assume you you placed your uh, the traps maybe in your field in your in your field to collect maybe insect data. It normally maybe at certain point or a certain unit area, you'd find that maybe there is no data. The the frequency there always maybe for five ten days that we have been collected data. There is no data, and the other places there they have a, a lot of data. So by using this other GIS tool. Uh, which they require the uh, uh, in order to to create the interpolation, it it's it, it designed to have the smooth change of the gradient, so it might not work well for the for this uh, the ecological data. So uh, I I also want to 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 share to you how I have been using this methodology in my in my phd so uh the way i have uh, used this methodology in in my phd uh because uh we 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 had we have the data and uh, we wanted it of the full army data and uh, we wanted it to know uh, how can we how can we how can we how can we measure i mean how can we control the uh how can we control this, uh, the 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 uh, the invention of the foreign mimi in Tanzania, uh, we know it's not uh, ideally, uh, economic ideally to like uh, for example, to place the trap all of, because for us we wanted to to control the foreign mimi all over the country, but we know it is not ideal, uh, idea economic ideal to place the trap after, in every area because that will be. Uh, it cost a lot of money, so we wanted it to know uh, at what distance that uh, we at what how far how far can we place the trap? How far uh, I mean, how far from one point to another that we can press the trap so that once we know once we we press the trap in here and if we we get an observation, it will automatically that we can know that in our within a certain area that if we found observation here, it means that the high likelihood that we can, uh, there is a follow meme within that area. Uh, so for to do that, for 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 to do that in our in our study using the SAD methodology, uh, as you can see on the on your left side. So this is where we have collected the uh, the follower meme data in Tanzania, and we wanted to know uh, how far apart, how far like the distance from one like if we observation from one observation can be independent from the observation from from another observation. So to do that, we divided. Uh, uh, 
uh, the, uh, as you can see here, the country into small uh, uh, unit size, or you can call this uh, the the grid cells, whereby we 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 we, we divide into the different grid cells. For example, the 200 kilometer grid cell, 100 kilometer grid cell, and for here is a 50 kilometer grid cell, and uh, all observations within this one uh, uh, grid cell, uh, we consider this as uh, as a unit. Uh, as a sample unit, as a single sample unit. So all of the version between this uh, 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 this box, it's it's considered one sample unit. And then from there, we we can use the the SAD methodology to test to see if there is a if this uh, arrangement of the observation, if there is there is if there is land only, or if the aggregated of the regular pattern so that uh, we can we can determine to know that for example if they are at maybe for if they are at a certain uh, unit size if they are aggregated it means that we, we can we can we can know that the observation from one unit size to another would be independent from each other then we can use that uh, distance as a recommendation whereby you can use it for the for the control measure so for for this study we use the um, the study and uh, once i performed the analysis then uh, I, I i was able to obtain uh, to obtain this variable as you can see the the index of aggregation and this is the probability value uh, uh, from from these three maps uh, from these three figures yeah uh, you can Obviously, see that uh, uh, figure like the one with the 200 kilometer, even if it says aggregated, but it's not statistically significant because the p-value is greater than 0 .0, 0 0.05. But for 100 kilometer, we, we can see that the p-value is uh, less than 0 0.05. It means that uh, this is statistically, statistically significant uh, uh, this unit size is statistically, statistically significant. It means that if you want to to control, uh, if you want to 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 place, for example, trap uh, and to have an independent observation, if there will be press 100 kilometer apart from one another, it you, you can get in the, in the independent observation. So that was the, the the main purpose for 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 using in in in, in my study was to 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 identify the distance that the, the one observation can be independent from from another uh, from from another observation so that when you 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 want to do to do the monitoring it means that here you can press uh, a trap between one or hundred kilometer. But that's the, that's the only uh, one example of how, how you can you can use this the the, the study methodology, but uh, others have also try uh, use this as the study methodology to answer their different uh, research uh, question. For example, uh, is this study? It is the 2010-2010 study. Uh, whereby uh, it's a uh, it's it's a study that is conducted in uh, in Ethiopia, so it, it was uh, uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the pest controlling measure. This uh, it's called a T, T, uh, T, T is it Tets, Tetsi? It's called Tetsi. So uh, yeah, they yeah, want Tetsi fly. Tetsi fly, yeah. Have you ever been bitten by a tetsi fly? Has anyone here ever been bitten by one? The only place that I have been bitten by a tetsi fly, and I have been many times, is in your home country, Peter. Oh, sorry, I haven't been. It's very, it's very painful. You don't, you don't forget it, and you, you learn tetsi. Oh, very sorry to hear that. So for for this study, they uh, because the 
uh, this they 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 also uh, uh, affect the 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 health of the cow, cow cattle. Here yeah, specifically, they are talking about the cow. So they collected the data uh, within this area in Ethiopia. So they they wanted it to know. Uh, so using trap, they they wanted to know where which area are uh, like the occurrence of this uh, tetsi fly are uh, more significant compared to the to the to the other area. So for for that case. Uh, they were they were able to use the this the study methodology, and as you can see on your left side, this is where they have been collecting the data throughout their study area. And on the light figure, you can see uh, you see this the the dotted the, the dots the one that of the black color. There, yeah, it's 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 where it shows uh, the area that have more significant. Uh, uh, more significant the, the the occurrence of this the the tetsi. and so if they in case they they want to to prevent to control this uh, this uh, tetsi fry, they have to concentrate in 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 this area because this is where they have the uh, high significant the, the occurrence. So this is the it's just just the 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 PowerPoint to, to show you the general idea of how the the, this study methodology can work, and uh, apart from these two examples, this methodology also can be used in uh, uh, plant diseases epidemiology. You can use it also in uh, weed science, in biocontrol pests, biological invasion, and uh, forest management, and plant ecology. So, idea is the same thing as as I mentioned. It's uh, you once, once you corrected your data, then you use the study methodology to know the the special like to know if they are the occurrence of your of your data if they are uh, aggregated or if the arrangement is regular and if they are aggregated, it's, it means that you can know the area that they need a higher concentration. I mean, so for the control, so that you can you can prevent, for example, if it's a pest, you can prevent the the pest. Uh, another uh, where we, the, we, another way you can use uh, uh, this, this this study is the the to, if you want to find the association uh, between uh, for example between the plant between the between the plant and uh, the pests or between the plant and the soil if you you can you want to to, to determine uh, if the the growth for example the growth of the of your of your plant is associated with the maybe the nutrient value in the soil, or if the the the, the effect of the the effect of I mean if the the growth of your plant is affected by the by the presence of the pests in your in your area, you can also use this methodology uh, to to determine that. So. This is more about the talking. Maybe I can also sh show you some little code on how you could use this uh, methodology in, in R. Can I, uh, before you go to R, can I um, just ask a question? Could I ask you to go back to your um, map of Tanzania with those three different results? Yeah, <clears throat> let me say this just out loud, and if anybody has any questions about this, um, then let's just briefly talk about it, because I think these are very interesting. And uh, if I say in my own words what I think you're trying to do here, um, you can tell me if you think the same way as I think. <laughs> and then let's think about this a little bit. So well, one thing is just remembering to the SADI index, the SADI index is on a scale of um, like less than one and more than one. And if it's right around one, uh, I think that means that it's um, <clears throat> it's um, random. Is, or it may mean that it's uniform. I can't quite remember. But I, what I do remember is that above one, significantly above one, this this test is is asking whether the number is whether the IA, the SADI, index is um, greater than one. 
And when it's greater than one, that means that it's clumped. And the um, so you've got two ones here. The one in the, the bottom, this 50 kilometer grid is clumped and the one at 100 kilometer is clumped. But the one um, <clears throat> at the 200 kilometer grid is uh, so dispersed that it's, um, you know, it, there's no evidence one way or another of a pattern. And the idea for this, this is just in my own words, would be to look for the threshold. The, the idea for this is if nationally you had limited resources and you wanted to have early detection of a pest, we know that there, there may only be, um, there's, there's uh, expertise on the ground that um, may not be, uh, maybe a bottleneck for detecting this. And there may not be one expert per agricultural field, for example. So the motivation here is to pick the spatial scale, the, the largest spatial scale where you'd pick up independent events. <clears throat> and I think you're right that um, I think what you concluded here is that the 100 kilometer scale was the um, conservative least distant scale and 200 was too big. But I just wonder, I just wonder if there would be a, a reason to um, simulate finer on a finer gradient and find the minimum, find whether there is a minimum between 100 and 200 that is that is bigger than 100 but smaller than 200, where there's a significant effect of um, of clumping um, to to really be as strong as possible on what the minimum grid size is. Discuss. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, thank you for the for that uh, the explanation. I think you are, you put it in a, in a, in a, in a much simpler and a collect. I mean, a much simpler and, and way so that anybody can and collect so that everybody can understand. Of course, uh, so here it was the it was just for the purpose of the of the demonstration. We wanted it to I wanted you to show like uh, uh, which at what scale this uh, uh, observation can be independent uh, from 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 one another. So for for the case here, I've shown uh, three uh, three unit uh, three scale 200, 150, and uh, here we can see at 100 scale we can see that. Uh, uh, the observation will be independent because of our, our p-value. Of course, we 50 kilometer we also see is independent, but uh, it's not economical wise because we have a, a, a far, far, I mean 100 kilometer is independent. So it means that uh, if you want to place trap, it means if 100 kilometer it's in the independent, there's no need for you to use the 50 kilometer. But as Eddie said. Uh, like we have seen that 100 is kilometer, 100 kilometer. This observation will be independent, uh, but you, it's not the end. Uh, you cannot end here because maybe there are somewhere there are some distance between here. It can also be independent. So it's a try and error. So you could try uh, maybe 150 kilometer uh, to see if it is independent or not. If it's not independent, it means that you can go lower. If it's still independent, it means you can keep going uh, upper. You can take the upper scale until where you find the, the, the where your maximum scale where the observation can be independent. Yeah, yeah, I think that we're on the same page on that. I have one other question. This this one is also a um, just a suggestion of kind of explore this more and make the analysis stronger, more convincing is um can i ask you uh how if i if i look at those those maps these these three gridded maps here i see that the um the data the array of data and the placement of the grid um because the data are you know they do appear highly clumped at some spatial scales um i imagine and i wonder if the placement of the grid itself um, could affect the results of the SADI analysis. And uh, when we think about spatial problems like this, sometimes we think of um, 
what we might call uh, systematic grids that we, we place with a, an anchor point um, in some particular place and the orientation of the vertical and horizontal bars uh, aligned, let's say, to the equator or something. There's, we'll just ignore, if anybody is into GIS here, we'll ignore the problem of the curvature of the Earth completely here. But um, <clears throat> I wonder if um, if you randomly place the grid several times and reran the analysis at each spatial scale, what it might allow you to do is to come up with a, a mean estimate of the SEBI index and, the, and an estimate of the variation. And then, you know, you could look at that across several runs at several scales. Like uh, you've done it at 50, um, but it looks like the interesting ones would be around 100 to 200. So like, um, I don't know, it, once you set up the code or something to do this, it would probably be really fast to run. So like every 10 kilometers from 50 to 200, and then you could have a curve <laughs> of, uh, if you can imagine it, of um, SADI index estimates. And uh, you'd be looking at where the boundary and some measure of the confidence interval, you know, doesn't doesn't cross over zero. I just wonder if if having the randomization of the grid placement would affect the analysis. What what, what is what do people think? What do you think, Peter? Uh, not sure. Uh, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, because for. Because maybe because this is just, just an introduction because when you, you do the study, uh, there are two ways you can calculate the indices. Uh, you can use the Perry index and uh, the, the other one it's called the low indexes. So with, uh, with because the uh, the way you, you you the way you you, you explain uh, it's it's it, the, the, the way you can analyze, that way, you can, if you want to do that way, you can use the uh, the, the low indexes, because uh, if you use the Perry index, it does not consider the uh, the effect of the of the of the of the points which are, are, are near the border. For example, within this cell, it does it, is, it does not really consider the. Uh, it, it's like ignore the effect of the point near the border, but using the low index, it also consider the uh, uh, the effect of the point near the border. Is, I'm not sure if I have answered the question. Yeah, I'm not. I think we have to take the conversation out, out of here. But um, yeah, I, I think it's interesting. And to me, I would. I think it could be pushed a little further. I guess that's my last comment. Does anybody have any questions before we go to the code? Okay. Stage stage is yours. So in code, it's also really easy to to run the just the, the study method, the study procedure, the study method method. But uh, be, because based on the nature of my data, I had to do some formatting, which I don't think it's relevant for uh, for, for 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 this presentation. So I have already done that. I have formatted my, my my data into the way that can be used in the in the side index. So here, what what I'll be doing is the and uh, the side index in R is implemented in this uh, the package. It's called the Effini. If you want to uh, implement the the side index, you can implement. You, you you have to install this package. It's called Effini. So here. 
uh, just set up my working environment and run my libraries and uh, see if then uh, uh, as I've shown in the presentation, I've already formatted my 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 data into the, the 200 uh, 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 degree cell into 100 degree cell into the 500 degree cell. So what what does it mean? It means that uh, as you can see, for example, as you can see here uh, in in this figure. Uh, so this one it was for the for the 50 for the 50 kilometer it means that all the point that uh, are within that uh, grid cells it means that uh, uh, will be summed uh, and uh, those points for example if they are 10 it means that there will be it will be summed and we consider the 10 point and that grid cell will be considered as a one sample unit so for me i have formatted my, my data thought for 200 kilometer for 100 kilometer and for the 50 uh, for the 50 kilometer so once uh, you have formatted your your data into the that, into that format what is left is to perform the the, the sub analysis and as 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 i said before uh, if it's greater than one, it means that it's aggregation. If it's less than one, it means that it's, it, there's a regular pattern uh, uh, within your data set. But for, for for the case of our study, we wanted to find the, the, the aggregation. So we are testing the different unit size, the different scale, so that we can get the, 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 the aggregation, which it will, it will indicate the, the independent observation between uh, between one observation and another observation. So, uh, before you you run the the third uh, uh, the third uh, the, the third function, uh, you need it to to format uh, uh, into format so that you can use the uh, you can use the into the into the third function. So, this is the it's it's a normal procedure if you want to use the study and uh, once you format that you can see your data as 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 uh, as printed plotted here but this one is for the for the two clear for the 200 kilometer and once you have done that then you can uh you can run the the sad methodology and uh, so here uh we use the the basic index which is just it's called the pair index this is the it's the person who designed this methodology and uh, the aggregation index he named he named it after himself and uh, of course there are the other variable here you can see the thread here i just put the thread equal to one because this is just the simple data and you got a larger scale it means that it won't uh, take much time but if if for example you have a smaller unit scale and you have a large data it means that you can run your code into the multiple threads so that to speed up the, the the process and the number of the this is npm it's a number of uh, permutation is how many time you want this uh, to random run the uh, your simulation so that to determine your your side index so if you click you see it's it's very straightforward and it's very easy and uh, you can see the summary of your results uh, we can ignore this for now but uh, we can uh, dis discuss this the, the main output as it says here which is the index for here we can see that uh, our aggregation index was 1.05 which is greater than one it means it's aggregated but our p-value is uh, 0 0.3 it means that uh, it's greater than 0 0.05 it means that this uh it's not significant it means that by using that uh, unit size of 200 uh the the, the data are aggregated but they are not statistically significant it means they are not independent from one another so then uh, i tried it for 100 kilometer and when you plot the, the data will be like this and when you do this, uh, you run the side analysis, the third method. And 
and also you can see the summary of the results. Uh, so at 100 kilometer, it was 1.04, and uh, the p-value uh, was 0 0.04, which means that uh, it's less than 0 0.05, so it's uh, statistically significant. And uh, we can also do the, the one which uh, for, for, five, for five, 50 kilometer. This one, it will take a little bit longer time because we have uh, uh, curated uh, our data and they are into very, very small sample unit, as you can see on your left. So it has to run uh, for each for each of the sample unit. That's why it's taking too long. While that's running, Peter, um, <clears throat> could you say something about um, how you made this is kind of getting back to my um, my question about randomizing the grid. How did you um, go about making the the different data frames that you read in at the different spatial scales? I mean, how I formatted my data into the different spatial scale? Yeah, I was just you've got three different versions of the same data set. Your your data set the whole whole thing, as I recall, it's been a while since I've looked at it <laughs> now, maybe even more than a year, but uh, it's X, Y coordinates of each observation of the presence or absence of the pest. And then you formatted them and assigned them to a grid. So I just wondered how, how you uh, chose the aggregation in the grid to make those three different data frames. You, you didn't talk about it. You kind of went past it, but because I was thinking about the randomization of the grid, it, I noticed it. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, I maybe I can talk about that, but uh, I skipped that part because I thought maybe people won't be interested. So I just went, went straight to the to the third method. But uh, so I I I wrote these uh, small functions which. Uh, uh, it, it it convert this uh, <clears throat> com convert the data into the format into into this uh, the into the 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 grid cell whether it's 100, 100 200 kilometer 100 or the 50 kilometer and uh, so So uh, basically what, what I did, for example, here I define, okay, I want my grid cell to be uh, 200, uh, 200 kilometer. Uh, then um, because uh, in a spatial, I mean, uh, in a what? In a, in, in, a G, in a GIS, we 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 uh, like this measurement uh, in terms of degree. So I converted this into the into the degree, and uh, based on the Tanzania, because it's I, I want to to divide the the country into these different small grid cells. So I use the Tanzanian extent. Then I say my resolution here it's uh, 200 kilometer by 200 kilometer. It means that it will divide the country into a small grid cell, and uh, each grid cell will have a size of the 200 kilometer. So I did that for the 200, and I, I did that for the 100, and I, I did the same thing for the uh, for the 50. For I mean for the 50 for the 50 kilometer, and. Uh, once I have done that, once well, okay, once and then once I have done that, uh, I I checked on each grid uh, on each grid. For example, if it's two hundred kilometer, or or maybe I, I can I can print it here for the demonstration.
for example, as you, you can see here, it, for example, for this 200 kilometer, what then what next I did, like within the, this one grid cell, I, I later um, sum all of the observation that have been found within one grid cell uh, for for 200 kilometer, for 100 kilometer, and then for the 50, 100 uh, the kilometer. But uh, before uh, I did that, because when I created this grid cell, it was giving me this uh, rectangle, uh, the grid cells, which mean that uh, it, yeah, I was also considering the the other part which are not within my side area. So I had to eliminate uh, this area that uh, were, were not uh, within my side area. So to do that, I, I, I use this uh, simple function. It's called uh, like the intersect function, which it's a basic uh, our function. Intersect is a it's a classic GIS spatial function. Yeah, implemented in R. It's it's easy to use. Yeah, this is the step where I think that it would be possible to randomize the placement of that grid. Both maybe both the left, right, up, down orientation, just to jiggle it randomly within the length and width of a single grid, but maybe even also the orientation. I, I doubt you gain that much by jiggling the orientation as well, but it's just, just a thought. Thank you for explaining that. You can, uh, you can go on and finish if there's more. Yeah, so then uh, once because they have uh, eliminated all the grids uh, that we are outside the country, or that they are not they are not intersected with my boundary. Then what I, I did next, uh, I sum up all the observation that are uh, uh, within uh, within uh, within each uh, each grid cell, and uh, to to do that, I created a function. But uh, basically, what then what I, I this is the function. I name it to remove an intersected grid cell, but it does its remove an intersected grid cell and it sum up all the variable that all the points that are within one grid cell. So, for example, and uh, not only that, it also format the data into the into the format that uh, the study uh, the study method can be able to to understand. Oops. So this is the it, it's the format. It's basically it because this data were in uh, x latitude and in longitude. So I formatted them into this x and y. And uh, because here for at, at, this is original, then it means that at this point it's 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,000, 1,200. Same as for the for the y axis. So for each point, it check for example for x when it's got for x is zero and y is uh, two thousand two thousand one thousand and two hundred here. It means that i this is the number of points that have been found within this point within this the, the grid cell. So this is where this is the format uh, the the sad method you understand. So that's how I formatted the data into the, this it's way. Then once I have done this, that is where I run this code. Uh, I, I run the, the SAD methodology. So the, the last thing we did was for the 50, for the 50 kilometer. And uh, I think we can also print the summary, which is also say that uh, it's it's significant. Also, uh, I, I've, also I've also mentioned that you can also visualize uh, your results. Yeah, you can do that uh, uh, by 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 this graph. Because and uh, so for, these are called uh, uh, red and, and blue plots. Uh, the red it means it's patchy and uh, blue it means it's gap. The meaning of it is that it also it indicate where 
there the place where there is a higher concentration of your of your of your data and the place where there is lower concentration of the data and uh, where for, where they, they are, for example if it's a place where they are likely to move if it's so it's moved there they are moved from the higher concentration to the to the lower concentration maybe a good picture you can get it from this uh, from the 100 kilometer it means that so this bread red it means that this is where there is a higher concentration and this is where there is low concentration so it means if for example it's based on your on, on 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 what you on your research question what you do but for uh for for this study it might not mean that much but for example if you want to know where are the places that the there's a higher concentration and where the presses are a higher concentration. It means that this red is uh, the press where there's a higher concentration and uh, the green, this is the press where there's a lower concentration. It means that if the, the movement of this, uh, if it's a pest, it means it to be moved from the, from the red to, to the green. Uh, you can also interpret this into, into this surface. And it's a really um, whirlwind tour of uh, the SADI index. Peter, thank you. <clears throat> no problem, Kate. Thank you for coming. Could I ask you one last question, Peter? We're almost out of time. Um, is there um, a single resource that you could suggest for people that are interested to uh, maybe to use the SADI index themselves or to learn a little bit more about it? like a paper or a book chapter or what what sources did you find useful yeah i can maybe i'll, I'll put it in chat but so <clears throat> the problem uh, maybe or maybe the problem is of course i, I can give you the the package tutorial but uh, i think it assumes you already know what you are doing so the more resources for for this methodology to understand it will be to to read the research paper maybe i can also give us a i can also put on the chat here some of the of the of the of the paper maybe i think are, are more useful that it uh, help you to understand this methodology I think I remember the vignette for um, for this package is very good. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, the one that I was thinking of is that um, there's a review that's called uh, 20 Years and Counting with Sadie. Is, is that the one you've... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, but I, okay, let me send, I, I've, let me send it, the, the, the link. This is the one that I'm thinking of that that I thought was pretty useful. Yeah, yeah, that's the same. Yeah. One. Okay, well, thanks for that, Peter. It, does anyone have any questions or comments about this? Uh, you know, don't be shy. If you have some, maybe if you're thinking about how you could apply it to your own research, this would be a great time to explore that. Anyone? Also, uh, this is another link where it shows uh, where the it has been applied in uh, in different uh, uh, in different uh, research fields, like for example in uh, maybe in entomology, in, as a, in weed science, in the forest management. So if you go through this paper, uh, you you can also find the the link of the other the paper where people have used this methodology. Yeah, it's a classic for um, for pest species. I think most of the applications that I've seen over the years, uh, and I've, I've never used this a lot until you and I talked about it, um, Peter, but I was aware of it from um, larger scale studies looking at patchiness and habitats. And it seems like it would be very good for um, applications uh, at a finer spatial scale for pest species. You're using it at the country scale here and trying to nail down, you know, how many kilometers 
is an in between um, traps might be independent observations for early detection, but even much smaller. Um, like this, uh, I, I can't see if Claire is in the chat or <clears throat> uh, actually Eugenia. I, I'm I'm thinking of this as a thing for like your uh, your vine weevils. You know, if you've got a big thing and some traps in it, um, like these smart traps to detect the pest that's rare, something like this, um, yeah, might be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not uh, it's not like you have to use it for the country, for the whole country. You can even use it in your, for example, you know, experimental field, like even if it's like 10 meter by 10 meter, you can also use this uh, methodology to, to, like, for example, if you want to know the the association between the soil and the plants, you can also apply this methodology. So, and I, I think for those guys who are in the entomology club, I mean, plant, uh, who are doing research in plants, I think they can benefit if they try to, I think they'll benefit if they, they spare some time and look on this method. Peter, that's great. Thank you for presenting this. Um, that was just right. If you, um, if you if you do have anything to share, there's a video that has been made. We probably should stop that now so it doesn't go on and ramble. I'm just going to 